I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I have had it. I've had it. You know what I've had? It. And I have had it with imperfect pie crusts. I have. There's really no excuse for it. There is no excuse for not putting in the extra work to get the perfect pie crust. And so our first presenter is Brooke Minner, and she is going to tell you about the perfect pie crust and why it matters. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the perfect pie crust and a little bit about why it matters and why it matters to me and why it should matter to you. Um, and we'll get started in just a second. Yeah. We're sure this is working. <laughs> Seems like I'm really long. Okay, great. So, uh, why do we love pie? Um, pies are really an ancient food. There's proof that ancient Greeks and Romans made savory pies. And one of the reasons is that they're easy to store. They're easy to carry around because they're in their own container, and they really help preserve the food that's within them. And it is, in fact, true that in... Never mind. So these are <laughs> two pies that I made at Thanksgiving. And just to talk a little bit about the kind of cultural importance of pies in our country, uh, in 1800, there was an American cookbook that listed eight sweet pie recipes. By 1947, the modern encyclopedia of cooking had 65 varieties of pies. So my own pie crust obsession began in 1998. Uh, I took a semester off of college and I mostly devoted my time to making pie. Um, and a couple of other important things in 1998, uh, Google was founded. Britney Spears, she's down at the bottom there, had her first hit single, Baby One More Time, something else too. So um, here's the three important things about pie. You wanna have very cold fats, I will get to that in a second, and very cold water. Uh, you don't want to overwork the dough. That's the most common mistake people make. And you need to kind of be brave, because it's a cooking thing that people are afraid of and they're intimidated by. Uh, the recipe that I use comes from this cookbook, Baking with Julia. I've tried many, but this is my favorite. And my recipe makes four crusts, which is good for two double crust pies or four single crust pies. But the good thing is they freeze well, so make extra and freeze them. Julia's recipe is five pages long, so. Okay, so the question is to use your hands or to use a food processor, and I say hands. Making pie is fun in part because you get dirty and it's a very sort of tactile process. Also, it's way too easy to overwork the dough with a food processor. You press it a couple times too many and you're done. So the first step is to measure out your salt and your flour. I like to use unbleached white flour, and I often tell people this is not the time for going healthy and using wheat flour. You want to go white. White, white is important. Fresh, good flour. That's good. Step two is to um, cut up the fats, and I use a combination of butter and shortening, per Julia. You want to make sure that it's really, really cold, and in fact, it's good to cut it up, put it on some wax paper, and then stick it in the freezer for five minutes or so. Um, especially if you're working on a hot day or your kitchen is hot. So cold, remember the three essential tips. So then you start to work your fats into the flour and the salt. You kind of pinch, pinch the fat, which is what I'm doing in that picture, and sort of gently rub in the flour. And you really want to like hold back because it's fun and it feels good and you're going to want to do it too much. So just... <laughs> Okay, so then you add very cold water, and I usually um, measure the water and then I put the ice cubes in it ahead of time so that it gets as cold as possible. Take out the ice cubes, obviously, before you dump it in. And you can see in that picture there's some really large chunks of butter and fat. That's good. That means you haven't overworked it. It makes a flaky, nice pie crust, which is what you want. Okay, so step five is uh, stop way before you want to. Okay, and you want to have big, large pieces of butter like that one remaining, and then you just sort of like gather it into a pile on your counter, and it's going to be messy, and it's going to be falling apart, and you'll think you've done it wrong, but you haven't. Um, and then I wrap mine up really tight in plastic wrap, and it's okay if there's chunks falling off the side, just push them in and use the plastic wrap and get them in there, and then refrigerate it for at least two hours, but you can go longer, like you can go overnight if you have the time. Colder, colder is better. 
So with my recipe, since it makes four crusts, then I cut the dough into four pieces after it's been in the fridge. And um, now's the time to freeze some if you're not making all those pies. And to freeze it, I usually shape it into a little circle ahead of time. It just makes it easier when you're using it later. And it's still okay if pieces are falling off. You can see in that picture, large chunks. Okay, so a little bit about the rolling pin. That's, that's my rolling pin. Um, and a, a good one is really important. This one was given to me by my mother-in-law about 10 years ago. And um, like a good uh, cast iron pan, it's great if you can actually not wash your rolling pin, but just wipe it off so that all the fat and stuff gets absorbed, becomes kind of non-stick. So begin to roll your dough. That's what I'm doing there. And you kind of move around the dough and you can pick it up. So you make sure it's not sticking to the counter. You use lots of flour. And you want to try to keep it evenly <coughs> thick. It's okay to just use your hands too if the rolling pin is, is too complicated or too hard. Okay, so this is the time not to panic. <laughs> when people panic, uh, you want to keep really calm about the whole situation and, and have faith that you're going to get a good pie because you will. I've taught many, many people how to do this. So remembering to stay calm. Uh, and this next slide is actually going to show you some of your possible outcomes, <laughs> starting at the worst case scenarios at the top. So it's going to completely fall apart and you have to start again. Uh, or it might just crumble and you have to kind of reassemble in the pan. That happens. Or you have a cooperative crust with just a few moments of panic, it all works out. Or crust nirvana. So you can see it's messy. <laughs> There's mine, it's in the pan now. And, uh, you want to make sure that um, you have lots of overhang because it's going to shrink when you bake it. And some people like to sort of fold it up to put it in the pan. I've never had luck with that. I just like to pick mine all up in one thing and just put it in the pan, uh, which is what you see there. So you can kind of shape the edges. I'm in the process of doing that in that picture. Again, leave lots of extra dough on the side. It's a little hard to see, but that's pretty tall over the side of the pan because it's going to shrink. And then remember your tips, not to panic. It'll, you know, keep working at it until you get it looking the way you want. And that's it. Thank you, Brooke. Now there's going to be a quiz on all of this later. I'm going to come to each of your houses and test your pie crust. <laughs>